Welcome to the winter 2009 edition of Rec Connection Television. Your connection to recreation opportunities provided by Roanoke County's Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism. I'm excited to be standing here in front of a beautiful backdrop in Roanoke County's newest and largest park, Reed Mountain Preserve. Now this park just opened a couple of months ago and features over two miles of hiking trails, plus fabulous overlooks of the Roanoke Valley. We're leading some guided hikes here, which we'll tell you about later in the program. But first, let's get it kicked off with a wonderful half-hour tour of programs from Roanoke County Parks. We're here at the Brambleton Center, the area's only public pottery studio, and with me is instructor Michael Holland. Uh, Michael is going to be instructing a new course for us this year called Sculpting with Clay. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Ramsburg. Uh, the class, just to let you know, begins in January. We've never offered this class before. It's going to be Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. and Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Yes, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be covering. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Bramlin Center for uh, offering me this position to teach a class. But uh, what, what we will be doing is uh, we're going to start off with the basics. Um, uh, with uh, many of the f uh, famous artists, uh, they may be known as painters, but a lot of folks don't realize that they're, they're, they were based or taught from anatomy. And they, they really believe that you needed to start with the anatomical view of, um, of art. Why is that so important? Well, um, it, our skin is very valuable, of course, but uh, it's, it's mostly the aesthetics uh, that we see, but as far as the human development, um, we have you have to just with anything, just even with a building, there has to be a framework. Mm -hmm. And so, what we're going to focus on is the framework of the body, which is the skeletal system and the muscular system. Mm -hmm. So you're actually going to go look in depth at, at the anatomy to make sure that what you build on top of that really looks like it's supposed to. Yes, sir. Um, and even in my studies, I've learned that um, even as a, a, a infant, even through the gestation period of mm -hmm. uh, how our skeletal system is developing, we start off with 270 bones in our mm -hmm. body when, when we're born. But through uh, fusions of the bones, uh, usually as adults, we end up with 206 bones mm -hmm. in our body. So, so you're going to start off by looking at muscular skeletal systems yes. and how that relates to sculpture. What else are you going to cover in the class? Are you going to actually end up creating a sculpture by the end of the of the program? Uh, what I help, hope to do is uh, bring in a skeleton, an actual skeleton. Uh -huh. uh, have different. Uh, the first week, what we'll try to do is give different students a part of the body to sc actually sculpt. Let's, uh -huh. let's say some, someone may uh, choose to sculpt the, uh, the skull. Someone uh -huh. may choose the, uh, to sculpt the leg uh, mm -hmm. or, the, or the foot. And even in that, <clears throat> we will even learn, uh, my students will have to learn or have to know different parts of the body. We're just not going to look at it. Mm -hmm. They will have to be able to come and tell me what's, uh, what's the mandible, uh, what are your metatarsals, what mm -hmm. are your metacarpals, uh, what are your phalanges, and such. Sounds a little medicinal. Now, uh, <laughs> try not to scare off people. Uh, is, this, is this for anyone? Is this for someone who maybe has never even tried sculpting before? Well, this is for someone who is serious about art. Um, art is... Art is pretty much uh, a free will. You have to have a free spirit in art. But I, uh, this is just my point of view. A serious artist, well, just with anything, you need to know the basics. Mm -hmm. as, a, uh, as a cook, you have to have the basics. So Michael Holland in this class, uh, Sculpting with Clay, will uh, help you get the basics and uh, get a framework for building sculpture on top of the human body. Yes. Um, the class, again, starts uh, in January on Tuesday night, 6 p.m., and Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Yes, sir. And if you want to find out more, you can visit us online at www.ronocountyparks.com. Ever wanted to become a writer? Maybe even get your works published? I'm sitting here with Donna Aquaviva. She's a published writer who's been teaching our course for many years called Writing for Publication. Now, what if you're not sure if you have the right stuff to be published? That's why she's revamped the course this semester, and we're now calling it Basic Writing Techniques. Welcome to the show, Donna. Thank you. Good to be here. Tell us what you're going to be covering in Basic Writing Techniques. Okay, if I can go back just a few seconds. Okay. I've been teaching this course for something like 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, three different states, often 
I put it in the bulletin that what we're here to do is to help writers get published. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, the folks come into my class and when I say, what do you like to get out of this class? They say, I'd like to know if I can write, mm -hmm. which isn't the purpose. So I thought, why not change the purpose? Let's find out if they can write. Let's go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do. I think, you know what, that'll lead to publishing. Now, you, in the course of teaching this for 30 years, have had several people after taking the class that have become published. Can you talk about that for a oh, second? Oh, that's always so exciting. Last, uh, during the class, last semester here, right here at Brambleton, uh, one of the things I teach is how to do a query letter to an editor, mm -hmm. present yourself professionally, uh, sell your idea. She was accepted in the middle of the class, had this big assignment for a national magazine. I, we were also excited for mm -hmm. her. And that's kind of the sort of thing that happens. We've had people write for magazines. I've had a couple of go, go out and write books. Mm -hmm. And uh, some who go to newspapers, which is where I started. And so what you, you teach them not only uh, whether they have the right skills to write, do you teach mm -hmm. them technique, or do you teach them uh, how to? Get, you teach them also how to get published. Talk about what exactly you're going to be teaching. In well, this I'll teach about how to get published, but frankly, in this course, we're going to down uh, grade that a teeny bit mm -hmm. because that doesn't seem to be what they always want to know. What I first want to find out, and I'm going to ask everybody that that uh, signs on for the class to bring up piece for me to read so I can see where they are in their writing life. And then we'll go from there. What what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And where is your heart? What what are you trying to say? And here's how to say it. I've got to say it so that it's mm -hmm. publishable. And work with what they already have and draw them out and frankly let them find out what their real skills are. Most of them don't know. Don, is this something that everybody can do? They just uh, maybe aren't using the right skill set or yeah. don't know the right way to do it? A lot of people think, oh, it's genius or, you know. it's Writing is a skill that can be learned. Mm -hmm. It can be. Well, it can't be taught, but mm -hmm. it can be learned. I mean, I'm just kind of there to direct traffic. How, I can't teach them how to write the way I write, and I don't want them to write the way I write. How do you know when you're ready for publication? Well, you really need to have somebody you trust tell you that. And you'll be able to do that in this I'll course? I'll be able to do that. Excellent. Yes. So take the course. It's called Basic Writing Techniques. So if you want to find out more about it, you can always visit our website at RoanokeCountyParks.com or call us at 772-PLAY. Uh, the course will begin in January. Yes, sir. And we hope to see you there. So far, we've seen how to get published and how to sculpt lifelike creations. Want to find out more about these programs or maybe just how to get to a Roanoke County Park near you? All you have to do is log on to www.roanokecountyparks.com. And if you haven't been to our website in a while, you may want to check it out. We've updated with detailed descriptions, directions, pictures, and maps of every park and recreation center. And as always, we offer online registration so you can sign up for your favorite programs 24-7. Let's take a look at how easy it is to register. With online registration, you can sign up for your favorite recreation programs anytime, day or night, from the comfort of your living room. Simply type in our web address, www.roanokecountyparks.com, then click on the Register Online icon. Use the Activities tab to browse your favorite program, first by category, then by age. You can quickly tell when the programs meet and how many spaces are left. Click Add to select the program you want. Now you will see a prompt for username and password. If you've never registered with us before, the Create New Account button will guide you through the process. But remember, if you have ever registered by phone or rented a picnic shelter from us, you are already in our database. Call us to find out your username and password. If you're not comfortable with online registration, our phone number is easy to remember, 772-PLAY. Your call will be connected to a staff member at the Brambleton Recreation Center. To get you into the program you're looking for, 772-PLAY. And if you still can't figure out the online registration process, we're proud to introduce a new series of streaming videos online, taking you through the registration process in a simple, straightforward way. Simply log into our website and click How to Register at the top left-hand side of your screen. Please remember that if you're the first person in your family to register, you should be listed as the main contact. Once your name's been added to our database, then you can come back and add additional family members. Now let's get moving on our tour of recreation opportunities. Up next, let's hear a big cheer for our cheerleading clinics.
I'm joined now by Zoe Park from AIM USA. Now, AIM stands for Athletics in Motion, and this is a group that's known throughout the country for organizing quality youth athletics programs. Here in Roanoke County, they are uh, in charge of organizing our cheerleading clinics for ages 5 through 15. This is a great way to get your child prepared for school cheerleading and have a leg up on the competition. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about what kids get out of the cheerleading program here. Um, we try to teach them confidence. The most important role is to have fun. So, and just a, a learning experience with cheerleading. Looks like they're having a lot of fun here behind yeah. us, and I noticed there's a pretty wide variety of age groups. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our youngest, actually I've had, uh, our youngest is four, and our oldest are 15. Um, now, the, is, is this geared towards more of a recreational slant, or uh, more competitive with, with uh, getting a leg up in school? Um, I, the older girls we have come to try to get ready for middle school cheerleading, um, but it's more just for fun, to <laughs> let them have a good time. And, you know, they do, we do do a competition, like a little mock competition. Um, we go up to Richmond and do that, but, you know, they, they just have fun. That's our, that's our main goal. Now, you were telling me before the show, uh, I was surprised to hear that it's not just cheering that you do. There's, no. there's a difference between a chant and a cheer. Yes. And what was the other one? <laughs> um, we do chants, we do cheers, we do dances, we do, um, uh, what else? We do stunts. We do all kinds of... Can you go over those briefly? Sure. Um, a chant is a sing-song type of... Um, has a little bit more rhythm. Uh, cheers, sharper motions, slower. Um, you know, a dance is that. <laughs> and then we do stunning. So. And you mentioned building self-confidence. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what does a cheerleading program like this do to instill self-confidence in, in, the, in the youth? Um, you know, it teaches them it's okay to have fun and enjoy themselves. And no matter what, it's a positive. We ha we have pot we do positive reinforcement with them. So uh, now coming up, the two dates to look forward to in our in our winter session are Clearbrook Elementary School starting January 20th, mm -hmm. and Herman L. Horn Elementary School starting March 2nd. And what yeah. what you need to do if you don't want to sign up for it is visit us online at www.ronocountyparks.com. Now we've just seen how kids can stay healthy through youth athletics clinics, but what about adults? I'm joined here by Angie Kate. She runs a private massage therapy studio here in Roanoke, and this session we're privileged to have her instructing a course on reflexology. Can you tell us what that is, Angie? Reflexology is a bodywork modality which goes back 5,000 years, back to Egyptian times. It was actually uh, cataloged and then the Egyptian tombs that reflexology was part of their medical system. Um, it's a wonderful way to make the body relax, it enhances blood flow, raises endorphin levels, very, very good for just general overall well-being. And now let's get right down to it. What exactly do you do in reflexology? I see we've got a, a nice set of feet here. Um, you're, you seem to be massaging them. What exactly are you doing? Uh, exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm palpating the spinal area of, of her foot. Every mm -hmm. part of the foot correlates to a body part. We've got over 7,000 nerve endings in the feet, and everything corresponds. For example, the side of her foot, this is corresponding with her spine. Mm -hmm. So if I'm coming up on her foot, I'm actually s raising the endorphin levels mm -hmm. and helping her spine relax. Now she can't, can she feel that actually relaxing her right now or, or what is she feeling when you're doing this? Uh, generally you get a sense of relaxation, mm -hmm. uh, but any kind of massage will do that for you. And uh, how many different parts of the body can you actually affect by massaging the feet? The entire body is uh, on the foot. For example, this right up in here, mm -hmm. this is a lung area, mm -hmm. this is a spinal area. The organs, you know, such as the stomach and the kidney, they're reflected on the bottom of the foot. Uh -huh. And as we engage the various pressure points, we are sending energy to those organs. And reflexology yeah. also works on your, on your hands as well. You can massage the hands for the same effect. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about the course. What are you going to learn if you take the reflexology class through Parks and Rec? You are going to learn uh, not only to how to work on yourself and get the benefits for yourself, but you're also going to learn how to work on spouses, children. Reflexology is wonderful for 
for children. I have a lot of grandmothers in the class mm -hmm. that babysit, and then the grandchildren will go to sleep. So they use reflexology on their feet, and they say it's the best tonic ever. Uh, do you have a personal story about somebody who's uh, really been helped uh, health-wise by reflexology? Yes, I do. I had one client some years ago. Uh, she comes regularly, and we kept on working the gallbladder area, which is in this area of the foot right in mm -hmm. here. And she kept on saying, boy, that, that's painful, that's painful. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, perhaps you need to see your physician. Mm -hmm. And she saw her physician. It turns out she had gallstones wow. and got the, got the matter taken care of. All because of the, an ancient art form that's still practiced mm, absolutely. today. Absolutely. Uh, now, if you want to sign up for the class, you can always visit us on our website, www.ronocountyparks.com, or give us a call at 772-PLAY and find out how to sign up for this winter session course on reflexology. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you so much for having me. As you can see, there's something for every age and every interest in a Roanoke County Park. We hope you'll go online and see all we have to offer by visiting us at www.ronocountyparks.com. New on the website, download park photos to use on your computer desktop, or follow us on social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter to stay informed about new programs and events. One thing you'll certainly want to stay informed about is our brand new recreation center. That's right, Roanoke County is building a 76,000 square foot recreation facility and outdoor aquatic center. Let's find out more about it. Upon completion in December 2009, residents of the Roanoke Valley will have access to an indoor and outdoor family leisure pools, fitness equipment, a gym, a jogging and walking track, and new space for meetings, recreation programs, and more. This facility will be distinguished as the region's only true multi-generational facility with recreation opportunities for every age group. While a fee structure has not been finalized, there will be opportunities for both membership and pay-by-day admission to the aquatics facility. The large program space areas will allow Roanoke County Parks to offer more community programs than ever before and serve as a much-needed supplement to the Brambleton Center. County residents will also be able to rent the facility for community gatherings and activities. The Recreation Center will also serve as an anchor for the new 200-acre business park, creating an unprecedented opportunity for tax revenue and economic growth. Visit www.RoanokeCountyParks.com to view complete floor plans and get the latest construction updates. It certainly is an exciting time to be a resident of Roanoke County, but no matter where you live, this new recreation center will be a destination not to miss. As residents of the Roanoke Valley, we all know how fortunate we are to be surrounded by beautiful mountain vistas just like this one. The problem is, development often obscures the view. Now, Roanoke County has recently made sure that one mountain, Reed Mountain, will stay protected. Let's hear about it. I'm joined now by Roanoke County Greenways planner, Janet Scheid. Uh, Janet was instrumental in helping us coordinate the opening of our newest and largest park, just a couple of months ago, Reed Mountain Preserve. Welcome to the show, Janet. Thank you. Now, Janet, tell us the history about this project. This project is um, one that has been going on for almost 10 years. Um, about a decade ago, we were approached by Dr. Al and Mrs. Durham about their donation of 90 acres on Reed Mountain. And they put a conservation easement on the property first, and that's held by the Western Virginia Land Trust. And then subsequently, they donated the 90 acres to the county. A along the same time frame, and, and that took several years for all mm -hmm. of that to happen, but during that same period of time, we were approached by Fraylin and Waldron about um, 143 acres that they had on the side of the mountain. And I'm sorry, it was really about 153 acres. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to do the same type of thing. They wanted to put a easement on a conservation easement on mm -hmm. the property and then subsequently donate the, re the uh, remaining interest in the property to Roanoke mm -hmm. County. And so they did that. And those two land transactions took about seven or eight years mm -hmm. to, you know, from start to finish. Um, consequently, over the last year or so, the county has ended up with um, 
to almost 250 acres of land on the side of Reed Mountain. It's on the Bonsack side of the mountain and goes from, you know, about midway up the slope of the mountain to the ridge of the mountain. And the park, of course, just opened up... Uh, October 23rd. October 23rd. Mm -hmm. And right now what you'll see if you go out to Reed Mountain, of course, in the Bonsack area, is a trail. It's almost two miles to the summit of the mountain where, uh, where, where there is Buzzard's Rock is what it's called. Yeah. It's an overlook, 2,300 feet up in the air yep. over... Uh, beautiful portion of the northern part of the Roanoke Valley. Uh, and if you want to take a look yourself, uh, first of all, you can get directions by going on our website, RoanokeCountyParks.com. Uh, but we also offer um, a hike, offer a couple of hikes coming up in January, January 3rd and January 17th. Uh, our recreation department is actually leading a couple of these hikes. Janet, what will they expect to find there when they, when they hike with us? It's a beautiful trail, um, almost two miles, nice trailhead parking lot, good map in the kiosk, and um, the uh, Pathfinders for Greenways Wednesday crew built the trail for us, all volunteer service, um, over 1,200 hours of trail work. Uh, and if you want to go on that hike with us, look again on our website, RoanokeCountyParks.com. Uh, the, they're departing on January 3rd from Holland's Library and on January 17th from the Brambledon Center. So even if you don't know how to get there, uh, just ride with us and we'll take you there. Janet, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Scott. Now, we just heard about a van trip to our newest park, Reed Mountain Preserve. But did you know that Roanoke County Parks Recreation and Tourism offers a wide variety of trips every session? Here to talk about with that with us is Myra Sellers. She's the Recreation Program Supervisor for Roanoke County Parks and Rec. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. Nice to be here. Uh, what do we have coming up this winter session? We have a lot of day trips coming up. Um, we have, we're going to North Carolina several times. One is to Hillbilly Hideaway. Hillbilly that, Hideaway, what is that? That is fun. We go to, um, that's in Walnut Cove, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They have live music, dancing, mm -hmm. and uh, a big buffet dinner. So we'll go down for the dinner. Mm -hmm. We take an Abbott bus and come back uh, later that evening. Mm -hmm. We're also going to Asheboro, North Carolina, to, to the Asheboro Zoo. Or North Carolina Zoo. Mm -hmm. That's always a fun trip. The they, North Carolina Zoo, one of the largest uh, natural habitat zoos in the country. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's fabulous. And they have a little tram that takes you through all the different um, areas, mm -hmm. but it's lots of fun. Uh, we're going to go to Barta Theater. We try to do a lot of theater trips. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to be popular. This year, we're going to Barta Theater. Um, we're going to see um, the Jimmy... Um, uh, Jimmy Rogers show. It's filled with a lot of good music. And if you don't know, Jimmy Rogers was a, a famous uh, country style musician. Yeah, they called him the um, Blue Yodeler, I think. But that the should American be a, Blue Yodeler. That should be an exciting trip. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about our trips in general. Most of the trips that we offer, they depart from Brambleton Center, often from Holland's Library right. as well. Uh, the trips are either, if it's a small trip, it's on a van. If it's a larger mm -hmm. trip, it's on a bus. Right. And we usually do include some sort of a meal with the trip as well. We do. So mm -hmm. it's really an all-inclusive experience, True. isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. And we uh, try to have a pickup on this side of town and on the North County side mm -hmm. of town. So, yeah. Uh, what types of people do you get out for your uh, trips and excursions? Uh, we get a lot of seniors mm -hmm. because a lot of them are during the week. Uh, right. th we, but we've been getting a lot of younger people, uh, a lot of boomers, and some families go to now. What are they looking to get out of the experience when they join up with Parks and Rec? Just a lot of fun. And we try to focus on our customer. We put the customer first and uh, um, we gear our trips to. Um, maybe a, a pace where you can enjoy the trip but you don't come home exhausted so we have lots of rest stops in and mm -hmm. uh, like you said we do try to put in mostly uh, a lot of the meals right well not only do we have bus and van excursions uh, departing all the time you can find out more in our rec connection magazine we'll tell you about that in a second but we've also partnered with colette vacations yes. to offer full vacation packages there are two of them i believe coming up in the next year tell us right. about those well the one that's coming up is um the historic trains of, of um, california. california and that is going to be fabulous Colette is one of the five major travel um, tour companies mm -hmm. in the U.S. They've been around for 92 years. 
Uh, we've done several trips with them. Our clients come back and rave about their escort. So Trains of California, which is mm -hmm. a week-long excursion, all-inclusive. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll even get to the airport, is that right? Yes, we will. Uh, and the other trip coming up in September? September is to um, Hilton Head, North Carolina. Which is another week-long trip. Yes. Which is very, very exciting. If you want to yeah. find out more about any of these trips, uh, you can come in and ask Myra here at the Brambleton Center, yes. or you can pick up a Rec Connection magazine here uh, at Brambleton Center or at any public li uh, county library uh, around the Roanoke Valley. Um, if you want to find out more, you can call us also at 772-PLAY or visit us online at roanokecountyparks.com. Thanks, Myra. Thank you, Scott. We've got two exciting events in the month of February. First, on February 7th, it's Tons of Fun, an annual event that runs from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. where we'll have inflatables, out, uh, games, rides, and plenty of entertainment for families with young children. And then, on February 21st, it's the annual Roanoke Camp Fair. And here to talk about that, I've got Camp Roanoke staff member Lillian King. Welcome, Lillian. Thanks, Scott. Glad to be here. Now, Roanoke County offers really the area's only uh, camp fair in the Roanoke Camp Fair, which is being moved here to Tanglewood Mall again this year. Uh, tell us about the event. Well, like you said earlier, it's going to be held on Saturday, February 21st from 11 to 4. We'll be uh, hosting uh, for profit camps, non profit, uh, day residential, uh, trip and travel, special needs, and uh, specialty camps such as sports and computer camps. And now the, the camp fair is a really an unusual opportunity for parents who are not really sure what camp to sign their kids up for uh, to get to meet face to face with uh, camp counselors from all over the mid-Atlantic region, right, Lil? Right. It's a great opportunity for parents to uh, meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, staff from the camps who they're looking at and who they may uh, choose for their children to attend camp. Also, the American Camp Association, ACA, will be uh, have a booth there, and uh, they regulate uh, camps, and it's a great opportunity for parents also to have, ask questions from them as well. So make sure if your kid's interested in a summer camp, come see what there is to offer here at Tanglewood Mall on February 21st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m.? 11 to 4. I'm sorry, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, the event, of course, is organized by Camp Roanoke, which is a traditional summer camp that is owned and operated by Roanoke County. Uh, here to tell us about that camp, which will, of course, be here on the 21st, is Sam Peterson with Camp Roanoke staff. Welcome, Sam. Hi, Scott. How you doing? What is Camp Roanoke all about? Camp Roanoke is a traditional residential summer camp, um, specifically doing a lot of programs in the outdoor adventure type of field, mm -hmm. but then we do traditional elements such as campfire building, ropes course, um, archery, those types of things. And it's uh, one, of, one of the better camps in the area, of course, uh, for uh, grades K through 12, children entering grades K through 12. Tell us about first some of the younger folks that come to camp. Our younger program, it's a day camp, and we actually have satellite transportation we pick up here at Tanglewood Mall, mm -hmm. and that's for that's our discovery program. That's for ages 5 to 10. And then um, we have residential programs from 8 to 17 mm -hmm. that range from um, less adventurous programs for the younger kids where they stay on site to more adventurous programs for the older kids where we do a off-site surf and sea trek and uh, we go to New River Gorge and go climbing and rafting. New this year is horseback riding. Can you tell us anything about that? Um, the horseback riding program is being offered with our Voyager Camp, which is for ages 10 to 12. Um, and we're going to Reba Farms on the Blue Ridge Parkway near the Peaks of Otter, um, where they'll be submerged for a day, learning about horses, how to take care of them, and then they're going to take a couple mile trail ride. And of course, Camp Roanoke is accredited by the American Camp Association, which has some of the highest standards for summer camps in the nation. Uh, a great place to send your kids this summer. If you want to find out more, visit www.camproanoke.com. As you can see, there's a lot going on in Roanoke County Parks this winter. In the past half hour, we've only scratched the surface of the many recreation opportunities provided by your park system. To find out more, visit us online at roanokecountyparks.com, where you can register for most programs, or pick up a copy of Rec Connection magazine, available at any county recreation center or library. If you have a question about any of our programs, don't hesitate to call us. The number is 772-PLAY. It's easy to remember because that's what we'd all rather be doing. 772-PLAY. If you missed any part of this program, you can see it on our website. And, of course, we're right here on RVTV every Tuesday at 8.30 and Saturday at 10 a.m. For now, enjoy our winter program offerings. The spring program guide will be coming out just before March 1st. Finally, make sure you get a chance to come here to Roanoke County's newest and largest park, for an unbelievable hike and unforgettable view. Thanks for watching Rec Connection Television, your recreation connection. I'll see you in the parks.